managing, sorting, sending, and replying to the report. And we are saving a lot of activities in the local government just because we were able to close the circle and share important information to the citizen in the moment where they needed it the most. So when they perceive there is something that should be improved or fixed. So for example, this was the, the application and the citizen can see uh, all the trees, all the green areas with all the information that we decided to share. And this is the, the message I would like to share with you today, which is that uh, if we want to foster innovation, we need to design tools that are first fun to use, not just easy to use, but they have to be fun to use and that allow user experimentation. Every changes should require less than a minute. And this is the guideline we use to implement the, the project. And the reason is because whenever we want a kid to be creative, we give him Legos. So that with the Lego, the, the person can build his own, uh, his own solution. And this is what we tried to build in the municipality of Ravenna which means that if the local government decide to manage a park in a different way, maybe because this park is managed by a specific person, they can go in our platform and then can, they can design, they can draw an area and then build a rule which is applied only if the report follow, fall in the area. But maybe tomorrow they say, oh, maybe this area was not very good. So in a few seconds, they can remove the area they created and maybe design and draw a more precise one. And once I have an area, I can have a tool and we provided them the tool to build some rules. So I can build a rule and new automation that says that if the report follows, is in the area and is about the lighting system, then we should assign this colleague and send a report to the supplier. And this can be done in a few seconds by the local government itself without having to contact us to ask for new, for new projects. And then if the person change or if they want to move something, they can remove part of the rule and they can switch back with someone else. And this uh, to me has been the, the key to the success of the project. Because when we thought about the project, uh, we had some ideas, but that these ideas proved a bit wrong when we implemented them because reality is always more complicated. But by the fact that we gave them tools to quickly adjust, to quickly change and evolve the system they were offering to the citizen, they were able to adapt and design and evolve the system. And now the system is, is working very, very well. It's not perfect. No system is, uh, is ever going to be perfect, but whenever a big problem arises, they can quickly change and evolve. And if they have new ideas to try and test, they can build this test, they can launch this test, they can gather data and decide if keeping or trashing the test. This I think is mandatory if we want to allow local government to be independent and to drive change and innovation and experimentation. Uh, we involved in Narvenna over 200 employees um, we helped them receive and manage over 1,000 tickets and reports per month, which are less than the number they were used to receive, because a lot of reports are never sent, because the citizen already knows what's, what is the solution. And the other example, if five people report the same problem, we have a system that takes these five reports and bring them together in just one report. Because the problem is one, it's reported by five people, but the local government should do one process, not five processes. And then we uh, helped them reduce the average time to manage a report from over 30 days to down to 10 days. And the citizens in Ravenna are enjoying the system. And right now we have over 4.5 stars in uh, both Google Play and Apple Store, which is one of the highest rating in public service in Italy. So yeah, I think uh, uh, the key here was not to design a big and complex system, but to start small and be and adapt very, very fast. And this was the key message I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Gilberto, uh, for this very interesting uh, story and example. Um, 
as Greta already introduced uh, two speakers, I just want to take uh, the time uh, be between uh, the two speakers. Mario will pre uh, Maria will prepare herself to uh, refer to the link in the chat uh, to Miro that we will use uh, for the discussion after the second presentation. But in the meantime, you can already put your first name there and your affiliation. Uh, and also, if you want to be contacted on this project and have further interactions or more information, then you can also leave uh, your email address in the chat. And if you don't want others to see it, then please just send it to uh, me. Uh, so we'll go back together to Miro after the second presentation. Uh, so I will now hand over to Maria Cabello. Yeah. Uh, I think that you are now just in my screen, my presentation. That's right. Yeah, correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I'm just going to to give you a an overall overview of the use case we presenting we are presenting today. Um, we are a region in, in Spain, and just to focus where this region is, you can see that it's in the north of Spain, it's cross-border with, uh, with France, and, um, well, our economy is well diversified, it's important to say that we have uh, three different universities, and this makes possible just to have a, 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 a very extensive network of vocational uh, technology uh, with qualified people. And I think that this is important for you yes, to know uh, first of all. My presentation is about um, the geo portal of Navarre that we have identified at SU's case. Um, just saying the name geo portal, we could think that this is something that is not new. Uh, we have already, we, ha we already know a lot of geo portals and I think that um, what I would like to underline in this presentation is the, the new vision that we have here in the, in the region. We are talking about a new concept, what the, was previously known as the Territorial Information System of Navarre that we have been presenting in, in different fora uh, in, in the last 10 years. So it's something that is, um, well known in some uh, fora, um, but uh, what we would like to, to highlight here is that we are now focusing on something that is uh, very simple, that is very intuitive, that is built um, just thinking on reusing of the uh, existing information in a public, free, and uh, absolutely reliable information. Um, is the all the official information that is uh, is made also available as open data, and the idea is trying to cover uh, all the needs and requirements, not only from the public administration that is uh, um, so far uh, one of the main goals uh, of all those kind of geopotas, is also built uh, just to cover the professional um, areas and the, the general public, the citizens in general. So, and this is something that I think that is also really important because it's not just for uh, working with the information, but for using also for some other activities um, uh, outside the professional uh, perception. Um, so the, the project is open. Um, and what we consider is that uh, gives another value to the to the location and to the knowledge of the of the territory. Uh, so what can I do with this uh, with this uh, geo portal? Well, some of them are obvious. We can make a map. This is clear. It's something that we we have already been doing in, in the different geo portal or in the different SDIs. We can also find a, a location using places, addresses, coordinates, or 
uh, or properties. But uh, I think that the, the big difference is that you can create here your own content. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to be a professional. Um, you can use to, to design uh, your roads. Imagine you are a, a, a person that likes to hike or, or like to, to bike uh, and would like to prepare something for, for you, just create a, a new path or just to see where we could go on the next weekend, just to, to enjoy along with the family, with a group of friends. Uh, so those, uh, those kind of solutions is what we consider that make a little bit different. We can see information in two or three D that is also important, but um, we can also have like a, this uh, movie mode that uh, could show us where we are and when we have just uh, reached a, a peak, if we are climbing or when we have passed for a, an special area of interest. Um, those are the, the, some of the examples of what we can do with uh, the information and with the solutions we have in the, in the geo portal. Um, we are planning a trip and we would like to know if there is some incidents on the roads. You have the information updated there and you will be able to see the kind of in this incidents that we could find in a road and maybe just plan for doing the trip using another alternative uh, paths. Um, we know the type of incident and if there is an incident that is uh, the road is closed or it just maybe some stops for a few times, these kind of things. But we could also be interested in see how is the, the road uh, at that moment. And with all the cameras that the, the, the government have um, uh, implemented in the different uh, roads or highways, uh, uh, you could see how is the traffic at a precise moment, or you could even just looking in a, watching in a, in a camera, you can update uh, in the same moment and see how is the traffic evolving. Uh, further than this, we could also try to plan an, an excursion, um, just going from one to another place. We can just try to, uh, we can, uh, uh, include our information, we can include uh, our um, our track directly in the geo portal and see how is the, the profile, as uh, is this example, or uh, even more just to have information related to the interest of this path of this uh, track we, we have uh, or created or obtained from other areas. Um, so you can have here even pictures or uh, videos. And in some moment, you also could share this information with uh, other users. You can create your own tracks and just share with also other users. Uh, in a more permanently way, in the previous case, you can share um, a, a link that with other uh, users. And in this case, you can also provide just to be part of the geo portal, creating your own maps that could be there and could be reused by other, by other people. Uh, this is one of the examples we already have there. This is a circuit to work on endurance in, in Vera. This is created by a citizen uh, and he has provided the geo portal with the information. There is a very short explanation about what is the information uh, for. And then uh, you can see also there, which is the, the path they have created and all the information that is associated could be uh, seen uh, uh, as part of the solution. Okay, 
Um, this is uh, the, some of the examples that we have. I think that uh, just being sure that the service and users, the service we provide, we provide and the users that could be interested, uh, more than 1,500 uh, different themes, different lawyers, uh, something interesting just to compare how has been evolved in the region. We have uh, 28 historical aerial pictures since 1927, just to for doing some comparisons. And so far we have, uh, you can see there, 400,000 uh, people visiting uh, per month. Uh, the concept is uh, based on open source, open service, reusability as much as possible. And with the, just uh, always in mind that this is a public service, so, uh, we don't really collect any information about the people, the people location. Uh, we don't install any cookie and it's focused just in being a public service. So I think that uh, it covers the most important things that is that everything is open, but most important, everything could be reused for. And for this purpose, we also provide some um, just more uh, advanced solutions that could be used by anyone uh, offering some tools on some um, specific uh, developments and uh, just with uh, some knowledge, um, you can just put this information also into your own website or you can just uh, you would like to work on that. And I think that, that um, you can visit. The main problem is only in Spanish so far, but we are working, well, it's in Spanish and in Basque language, uh, but we are working just to put uh, also in, to translate into English in the nearly future. That's all, thank you. Thank you, so Maria. Thank you, Gilberto, for these two interesting cases, examples. I hope with this, you have an idea of what a location-enabled service can be. Of course, it's very diverse, um, but in uh, the two cases, you can see that there is a kind of potential value for citizens. They can use it in their daily life when it's uh, for bikers, for example, or in the case of uh, the first case where you can see that there are some tools supporting the processes of public administrations, the relationship with the citizens. So um, there is a lot more uh, potentially. Uh, of course, we can discuss a lot more examples because we have now exactly half an hour to go to the Miro uh, board. So I will open that um, and share my screen, but please in the chat, you find the link so you can go there. And for those that didn't do it yet, please um, put your uh, first name um, and um, yeah, put your first name and your affiliation. Uh, you can see it here, that's step one. Uh, some people have done that already. Thanks for that. Uh, you can still do that throughout the, the last half hour, of course, if you want so. If there are not enough stickers, you can take one here, as I demonstrate here. The color doesn't really matter, to be honest. But please go in Miro. Um, maybe, Claudio, you can uh, again paste it in the chat because it's somewhere in the chat, but maybe already more um, to the top uh currently okay i see seven people coming in we are um normally 29 so please enter the mirror board in principle you should just uh, mm -hmm. paste the link into your uh, browser and then you should end up in this page Uh, I see only seven people. Maybe some people have problems. Uh, in any case, uh, we will continue. If you join uh, a little bit later, that's also possible. Um, 
but we will start. We had this second step already with the two uh, uh, examples, uh, one from Italy, one from Spain. So I go from step two, the two examples, to the questions. Please, um, those that are in, I see 10 people for the time being. Um, we will go first to question one, and I see already uh, some answers popping up, but the first question is that based on the examples you have heard about, uh, do you think that this type of examples are replicable? It means, do you see this type of examples implemented in your municipality, your region? Even if you're working at university or in a company, think about your own region or municipality. Do you eventually, because that will be the very last step, also know about uh, similar uh, applications, apps on a mobile, on uh, the internet that you can uh, use already. Um, but see, okay, uh, let's see, people are starting to write. So we have 10 minutes, so we are very strict in the timing uh, for this first question. So please add your sticker or uh, add your answer in an empty sticker. Uh, it's important if you speak about your municipality or region, please uh, inform us uh, what is the region or the municipality you're speaking about, that we can uh, also eventually come back to you. I see some people say that they have uh, such uh, an application, uh, but then for the entire country, of course, it can be, for example, the cycling example of Navarra, Usually that's not offered at the municipal or city level, but rather at the regional or the national levels, that's perfectly uh, possible. Uh, I see also someone saying um, the citizen reporting tool um, integrated with a backend system and designed to be fun for both front-end and back-end users. Um, that's a, a, a good example uh, that's uh, what people might see more or want to see more. Uh, maybe if you have stickers that are small, maybe enlarge them a little bit that we can all read. Okay, more IDs. I see 16 people are now on the board. So please add your IDs, your comments. Uh, maybe it's also a question for the people that were speaking is, uh, do you think that your solution is portable? It means that you can reuse your, uh, your components that you developed to be implemented uh, in another region or in another municipality. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Gilberto, in your case, you uh, applied the solution not in one municipality, but in, in, in several cases, nor or in several municipalities, correct? Yes, we are working with uh, 100 uh, municipalities in Italy. So yeah, we can, uh, of course, with some differences, but we can uh, rebuild uh, uh, the project for different uh, situations. So yes, that's uh, how it works. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mario, what in your case, for example, the cycling uh, app, app, is that something that it co contains components that you can reuse or? Uh, in, in principle, uh, I think that the main component that you, uh, so the cycling is, is one of the examples that you can do. So is the basic uh, geo portal what you can reuse and you have for this purpose is uh, totally open in the GitHub, and there is an API that is uh, in continuous development. Um, so everything is based on uh, you can build upon the the API that you can reuse, and uh, if you wish, you can also share with the community. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, yeah. yes, it's components it, it and it's. It can be reused, and uh, in principle, the, it's already reused by some other region um, in, uh, in the Balearic Island in Menorca. They are reusing, and they are uh, just um, every development they are doing upon the API, they are just uh, publishing 
in the in the GitHub. Okay, so it's published in GitHub, so it means that other developers can look into it and yep. eventually That's reuse it. components. Uh, for Gilberto, do you have also some ideas or implementations uh, outside Italy, or would you say that this is a type of application that is typically bound to municipality processes in Italian municipalities, or is it uh, We've had in the past uh, some project with uh, municipalities in Chile, because we had some contacts there, so we had uh, this implementation, and something with uh, Spain, but uh, let's say we are focusing on, on Italy and uh, we were looking for partners to develop uh, projects outside Italy because we are a very small team, so we cannot uh, uh, follow everybody. But uh, yeah, with collaboration with external partners, we can uh, uh, follow project, uh, I think, in all the Europe with no problem. The system is built uh, in a scalable way. So yeah, it's just a matter of uh, finding the right people to bring the project uh, on. Okay. So um, I see a comment, it seems useful, but somehow similar to uh, various other applications or examples, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's, uh, that's true. Uh, if I saw uh, maybe not the first example, but the second example, it's true that there exist already in other member states, similar examples, I think. Uh, the biking one is all also existing, for example, in the Flemish region uh, where I'm living. Uh, that's true. And I guess you can find other examples. If you know about them, then please let us know or put it in the Miro board somewhere that we can have a link or that we can find it back based on the name of a municipality or city or region. Uh, that would be great. Um, see whether there is an other uh, comment, not here. I see that people started already com commenting on the question two. We'll come back directly uh, there. I don't know if there, uh, one of the attendees wants to um, speak loud because I see that not everyone is in the Miro board. So if you're not in the Miro board, that's fine. Uh, but please then speak up or put something in the chat. If you have a comment on question one uh, on the replicability, um, that would be great. No questions. Uh, Claudio, do you see something in the chat? Because I can't see the chat. No, no, nothing on the chat. OK. Someone wants to speak. If not, uh, we can shift to. The second question, of course, if you still have some ideas on question one, you can still add it. So I will shift a little bit. I hope you can see it. And there we have already a lot of ideas. Uh, question two is related to what do you see as the challenges for implementing such uh, services, location-enabled services? Uh, and I will just go through some of them that I can already uh, read. I see a few ideas that it is uh, a difficult learning curve to reuse technologies developed elsewhere. OK, that's a comment more for developers as a user. Um, then I see also the lack to access the same data and in the same format to reuse existing solutions. So that's uh, rather also how you reuse or implement the existing solutions, so the transferability to other situations. So it's uh, the underlying data that might be a problem, but also the learning curve is mentioned. Um, then uh, positively saying, okay, it's a good idea to avoid reinventing the wheel, but how can I know that someone else already developed the local tool that I need? Uh, indeed, that's an interesting uh, comment uh, because uh, you, don't know, I did not mention it explicitly, but uh, as part of the project, we uh, document uh, the case studies, the, of course, the 10 that we will uh, study in detail, uh, but we will add also other case studies that we know about, but that we will not study in a visualization tool of similar or cases, let's say location enabled uh, uh, public service cases uh, that we know about. Uh, so in the future, it should be maintained and it will be maintained and uh, become richer and richer with more cases. So that, in fact, that tool, uh, currently it's used uh, internally and as part of the project, but when it's opened up, that would mean that you have a kind of platform 
to find exactly these cases uh, because we recognize that it's not indeed uh, very easy to know about all good examples unless you have uh, uh, these types of uh, labs or workshops. Uh, so indeed, that's a, a good uh, comment. Then we see one of the challenges mentioned is uh, getting the public, so the end user to use the portal or uh, to use the services, and in the case of the geoportal, to create their own maps. Um, yes. Uh, we recognize that uh, the, some of the cases that we are already documented also in the report I mentioned, and I've put, by the way, the link to the report on the state of the art uh, in the chat, so you can have the link and access the report. You will find in the report a lot of interesting uh, examples. The report have been written by our colleagues from IDC who are also online. So you will get a lot of examples, uh, but uh, also uh, in uh, the um, phase of studying these examples, we saw that some of the good applications or good services uh, are not yet optimally used or uh, not very much used even. So that's a, a challenge uh, that is recognizable. Yeah. Then I see uh, a challenge uh, on uh, related to the demographic situation. Um, yeah, uh, it's a difficulty to get all ages uh, to use. Oh, someone is doing strange things. Please be careful what you are doing. Mm -hmm. That's the disadvantage of a mirror board. It was uh, shifting away a little bit. Okay, um, so uh, okay, it's hard to get all ages to use apps uh, for different technical serves. Uh, instead of using the phone call, and I guess uh, older persons will maybe also still use the paper forms and go to the uh, uh, city or town hall. Um, yes, uh, that's also a good comment. Uh, therefore, I think the comment from, and uh, uh, the what Gilberto was stressing that, uh, of course, that's maybe not for people at age, but uh, apps and the service should be fun to use, easy to use, just normal to use. And of course, that's more easy for younger people, I guess, that master uh, mobile apps uh, more easily uh, than for the very old people. That's, yeah, that's certainly a, a challenge. Um, I see uh, another one. Yeah, then I see the challenge of maintaining high quality data, uh, especially if you have a lot of layers and a lot of data, especially in your portal, how do you use them? Uh, is there a dedicated GIS team to manage that? Okay, of course, certainly a challenge. Uh, my personal comment would be is that um, what we see is more successful in Flanders because I've put one example, uh, in step four of a case of Flanders uh, is that the apps that focus on a particular support a particular process or provide particular information or in the case of Navaria is focusing for example on bikers is usually more successful than trying to have an application where you try to integrate all the information um, also in Flanders, also in the Netherlands, also in other regions and cities, you have very rich portals sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there's so much information that people do not find their way or not enough. Well, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It, it might be a, a, a barrier. So we mm -hmm. certainly recognize that. I don't know if uh, Maria or Gilberto yes, wants to comment yes. on that. Uh, uh, well, I, I would like to emphasize, not talking about bikers, but about hiking. There is uh, several associations of uh, in Navarre of uh, hiking people, and what they do is just to use all the information is provided under the the geo board. Uh, Maria, we uh, lose you. Yes, you are right. Um, no, that I, I was just saying that uh, we have a a huge community of hikers that not so much bikers, but hikers uh, uh, that are even not only reusing the information, but they also provide uh, updated information 
to the to the team so they provide their own tracks they provide uh, everything they they can do or, or they are even just checking any new functionality so there is a, a strong uh, communication uh, between all the teams uh, indeed the official information is made uh, from the official perspective uh, mm -hmm. but uh, still we have some some slot uh, some place for information provided by the citizens that is the example i have provided uh, in the second in the second case so just creating your own path and sharing with the rest of, uh, of the citizens. So we have both the official and reliable information. And for this purpose, different teams in the government, uh, the, they have their own responsibilities. And there is also some uh, other information that could be provided by the citizens in general or by the professionals, but anyone interested in sharing the information. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I think the perspective of involving citizens to yeah, uh, provide it. information is, is very, mm. uh, is popping up everywhere and makes uh, an application much richer, uh, so that yeah. it's not only a service, a public service that provides information or that uh, supports a, a process and interaction between public authorities and citizens but also involve citizens in decision-making yeah. or in contributing information to support the decision-making. Uh, okay. And there are some examples of that uh, also in the state of the art report, I think, but certainly we will probably have uh, at least one case study that will try to work on, on that because that's something that is uh, developing more and more. Mm. Um, other challenges that I missed, um, still looking for examples for the tools. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll yes. go quickly through. Um... Sorry, maybe yeah. I can address the question about the age barrier that was mentioned. Yeah, uh, yeah of course. Uh, before, like something we uh, encountered a lot is, uh, of course, this uh, problem with people which are not uh, digital. Uh, but first, uh, our goal was to mix and combine the online and offline channels. And in second place, a lot of local government are doing uh, events and presentation in schools mm -hmm. so that maybe grandparents now involve their grandson to make reports. And in this way, you can also uh, involve a younger generation to collaborate and participate in the maintenance of the, of the territory. And this, uh, I think, has been uh, mm. quite successful where it was implemented. Mm. Yeah. We, we are doing also with the education community, just sharing with them, training them in knowing about the possible uses. Mm -hmm. And some of the examples came from the education community. So they are using and they are making the youngest uh, people just get involved also um, mm -hmm. in there. Okay, I see here also an interesting comment and then we will stop with the challenges and go to the next one uh, is that uh, when you uh, work with reporting events, uh, accidents or other type of events, then it's very uh, important that it's handled and checked uh, thoroughly by municipalities, because otherwise if the information is not correct or not up to date, etc. Uh, users will be disappointed and not using the app or the service anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a, a very relevant comment uh, because we had uh, a, a quite nice uh, app uh, in, in Flemish region as well called GPOT that collects all the information because uh, if you do uh, a demonstration or organize a market or do public works in streets, in the public streets, in the public area, then you need to go through the process. And there was already an app and uh, companies, for example, uploaded information that they will start work without having the full process uh, gone through in the beginning when the app was there, it was not including the decision phase of the process so that uh, often then uh, uh, public works were announced that were not uh, accepted yet. So that, uh, 
created a lot of frustration and uh, misfunctioning or misinformation. And that we saw also had an impact on the use of the app, but that was fortunately very quickly restored. So the whole process is now going, uh, well, everyone has to go through the whole process. And then when the decision is made, then the information is published and everyone can see anything that will happen in the streets of Flanders, uh, on squares, uh, in the next couple of months, for example. So that's the, the quality of the data and the correctness of event data is, uh, or uh, time-bound data is very important. Uh, okay, uh, I want to stop this one and go to the last question. And I hope it's not too much of a mess. <laughs> it's always dangerous. Oh, where is my question? Ah, here. Okay, some people already went to question three. That's good. I will zoom in a bit. Uh, so that you better see it. So the third question is, what in your opinion creates value for the public, might be for businesses, for citizens, to uh, have such uh, location-enabled public service? Okay, I see here in big time savings, in the sense probably, or I guess that uh, the one that uh, put the sticker, uh, that the processes are going much faster. Is that also Gilberto's and Maria's uh, uh, yeah, Maria's example is maybe less on a process uh, or an app supporting a process, but is that what is also one of the conclusions of uh, the implementation of your um, app, uh, Gilberto? Uh, yes, uh, our point is that a lot of time was wasted doing things that should not have been done in the first place. So mm -hmm. before moving to the quality and the uh, um, speed of processes, we questioned it, do you need to do this process at all? And often the answer was no, because the problem um, was already planned to be solved, but nobody knew. So yeah, by challenging the initial question, we saved a lot of time. And then of course, we went to optimize only the processes that were necessary. And that's and that, uh, that why we could reduce from 30 days to 10 days, because you have less processes to go through. And uh, each of them is much, much simpler to use if you have the right tool to support uh, the operations. Yeah, uh, connected to that, I see here, connecting workflows across departments that that is more, I guess, more effective, more efficient, uh, instead of having separate uh, workflows, and then you need to kind of bridge all these workflows manually. I see also a broader idea of transparency of information, also for the research community, so broader than only for citizens and businesses. Communication with government, I see here. Um, and then uh, the statement that pu better public services and more efficient public services uh, improve the quality of life. Yeah. Also fitting better actual demand uh, for information, I guess, uh, is meant here. And then here, uh, particularly to citizen participation uh, is the tracking the outcome of the citizen reporting that's particularly important so citizens don't think their request goes into the black hole. Yeah, okay, where did I hear that before? I agree that sometimes you don't know what will happen with your request and that this kind of public service can help you to keep track and to get also an easier answers on, on your questions. I agree with that. Um, uh, okay, as a municipality, it's always hard to have everything to have an eye on everything. So using common uh, knowledge on things that go wrong or need care is more than helpful, yeah. And then having a service, uh, central service administration reacting to the concerns of cities should be great. So I, what I keep here from different uh, interventions is that uh, it should not be mostly or only services that provide information to citizens and businesses, but rather where you can interact with your public authority, municipality, city, uh, et cetera, uh, because the stressing factor is here that at the end of the day, um, also the citizens sh should get something back and know what's happening with the request or with the procedure that is ongoing or whatever. That's what I understand from the different interventions. Then I see fitting better the actual demand for public services. Yeah, indeed. Uh, what is exactly the demand? Um, 
uh, also their uh, citizens or uh, or cities and municipalities and regions might do play a more active role to know exactly what citizens want as services that would be great to have better insight on particular um, cases that could be developed yeah mm -hmm. um, i see that someone moved maria to the value part that's great <laughs> um claudio do you see other... it's not me it's not me no 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 <laughs> claudio do you see some additional questions or comments in the chat no nothing okay uh someone wants to speak speak out about this value id um in the context of the conceptual framework we are uh enriching the conceptual uh framework so that we uh, see or look to public value from different perspectives. So it will not be only on time use, efficiency, etc., but on more things that are also mentioned here, transparency, democracy, etc. So uh, we will inform you once the framework is more or less uh, done. Okay, I, I will stop this one. And then the last two minutes, because as I said, uh, they will automatically close the room. Um, okay. Uh, where are the examples are gone uh, oh geez okay um you were very inventive in doing things but <laughs> uh there was somewhere a box with uh other examples okay please put it somewhere it doesn't really matter where we will capture everything anyway but if you know about other examples, uh, please put them on the board. Uh, preferably, if you know uh, a link, uh, a website or URL or, or, or a video or whatever, uh, please put the name of the location enabled service that you know about, not only portals, please, but more specific applications, for example, that in your own municipality or region, uh, and or in others that you know about and that you know, wow, this is great. This, this is what we have uh, looked at. Uh, as I said, somewhere, you, but you will receive, of course, some of the material is the example of spot booking in Flanders that is focusing on uh, participatory engagement of citizens to delineate the use of parking spaces for particular usage. And the other one, which is very interesting and which will be one of the case studies, is on the COVID-19 war room in Cascais in Portugal, uh, where they have made a dashboard, which is currently mainly used internally, but that integrates geospatial data, heat maps, uh, with statistics on outbreaks, etc., and has been used to take uh, policy decisions, to make decisions, etc. But maybe you know other examples. So please uh, use the last uh, one and a half minute to put uh, names of cases, potential cases, just in the middle there, because I am afraid that, I know, the small box there, other examples became very small. Okay, that's the problem. Oops. Ah. Well, put it somewhere on the board. It doesn't really matter. We will find it back or in the chat. If you want to write in the chat, you are not on the board because I see 10 people are active still and we are 23 in the room. Uh, you can also put it in the chat and contact us uh, to pri provide us a link or more information about other cases. Okay, okay thank you. I think uh, we will shortly um, be kicked out. Uh, I don't know where I can see that. Uh, I will stop sharing. Uh, please, if you want to uh, uh, to continue, that's not a problem to do things on the board, but we will go to the plenary now. And thanks for active contribution uh, in this session. It's always a little bit challenge. You see moving things that should not be moved, etc. But overall, I think we have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. feedback. So thanks to all, and especially thanks to uh, Maria and Gilberto for their contribution with uh, uh, the example. You're welcome.
So it will close now, it seems. Uh, so I have to close. So we go back automatically to the plenary room. See you there.